close your eyes as I begin Brother Benji and the Bedtime Book by Luke Prendergast. Benji lived in a tall house with his grown-up sister Belinda, his baby brother Barney and their dad. His dad was a doctor and often had to stay working at the hospital late into the night. And so in the evenings, when it was time for sleep, his big sister Belinda would read Benji his bedtime story. Each night, she would go to the shelf and take down a big leather-bound book with glittering green lettering on the front. Then, she would sit on the bed, the book open in her lap, and read one of the tales out loud. Belinda told the most wonderful stories. They were always packed with adventure and intrigue, mystery and marvel. They were full of the most brilliant and lovable characters, such as talking dogs, fish living under the sea, and children with extraordinary magical powers. Belinda did voices for all of the different characters, and by the end of the story, when all the loose ends had been tied up and all the characters had achieved their happily ever afters, Benji would be so relaxed that he would fall into a deep and peaceful sleep. One evening, when the sun had set and the sky had grown dark and the moon had emerged like a cheesy grin up above, Benji settled down into bed, ready as usual for Belinda to read him a story. But, to his surprise, instead of taking the leather-bound book down from the shelf, Belinda sat at the end of his bed with her hands folded in her lap and smiled at him very mysteriously. What's happening? Benji asked her. Aren't you going to read a story? Beside them, in his crib, baby Barney blinked up at Belinda curiously. He was waiting for her answer too. Not tonight. Belinda said, still smiling mysteriously. Why not? asked Benji. Because tonight is a very important night, Belinda said. What's so important about tonight? Benji asked her, sitting up a little in his bed. He had a special sense for adventure, and right now that special sense was tingling. Because, Belinda explained to him, all the stories from my book are finished. We've read them all. Which means it's time to start a new book of stories. And, she added, with a new book of stories, we need a new storyteller. She reached out and took Benji's small hand in her larger one. I've been reading you stories since you were a little baby. But now that you're older, it's time for you to start reading stories. You need to start doing for baby Barney what I've been doing for you. That's what being a brother is all about. From the crib, Barney made a gurgling sound of agreement. Belinda stood up and went to the bookshelf. She went up high on her tiptoes, and from the top shelf, she took hold of a new book, one that Benji hadn't noticed being there before. She came back to the bed and handed the book to him. The book, like the one before, was large and heavy and bound in leather. But unlike the other book, the spirally lettering on the front of this one wasn't green, but gold and it read, Benji's Book of Bedtime Stories. Wow, whispered Benji, looking down at his new book. Cool. Benji was very excited to read a story for his baby brother Barney, and he couldn't wait to find out what kind of tales were contained inside this book. But when he opened the book up to the first page, he was met with quite a surprise. The page was blank. He leafed through the rest of the pages. 
all of them were blank. He looked at Belinda, feeling a little confused, and asked her how he was meant to read Barney a story if there weren't any stories in the book. Belinda laughed and said, Well, that's just the thing. This isn't any old book. This is your book, Benji. You have to fill it up with your own stories. But what am I meant to fill it with? Benji asked her. I don't know any stories. Belinda leaned closer to him, and Benji saw that her eyes were twinkling like stars. You have to go out and find them, she said. Anything in the world can spark an idea for a story. That's what's so wonderful about the imagination. You just have to go out and find some inspiration. Don't worry though, Benji, I'll help you. Belinda stood up again and looked down at him. Well, she said, are you ready? Belinda had barely finished her question before Benji had sprung out of bed. He certainly was ready. He wanted to get out there and find some stories to fill up all the blank pages in his book. Benji and Belinda pulled on their shoes and jackets and wrapped little Barney up in his coat. Then, with the book in Benji's hand and Barney in Belinda's arms, they went downstairs and out onto the street. The air was cool on their faces, and across the road, the windows of the houses glowed orange with lamplight. They looked up and down the street, first one way and then the other. I don't see any stories, said Benji. Where do we find one? We have to go and look for them, Belinda replied. Come on, let's go. And so, together, they turned left out of their house and began to walk down the road. They passed cars lined up on the curb like gigantic sleeping beetles. A cat slunk along a wooden fence and then jumped off as quick and fluid as water. Above their heads, the leaves in the trees rustled and whispered. But as far as Benji could see, there were no stories to be found. Soon they came across a man on the street. He appeared to be searching for something. He crouched down and looked beneath the hedge. He opened the door of his car, rooted around inside and then shut the door again. He lifted the lid off a bin and peered inside. But he didn't seem to be able to find what he was looking for. When they reached him, Benji and Belinda said hello to the man. Barney, who couldn't talk yet, gurgled a greeting and dribbled down his chin. Is everything all right? Benji asked the man. The man, who had curly grey hair, adjusted his glasses on his face and wrinkled his nose. Oh, he said, my dog has lost her bone. He pointed towards his front door, where a golden Labrador sat waiting for her bone to reappear. I've been looking for it everywhere, he carried on, but I can't seem to find it. Do you need any help? asked Benji, who always wanted to lend people a hand when they were in need. Oh, no, said the man, shaking his head. Thank you, but I'm sure it will turn up somewhere soon. And with that, the three siblings continued on down the road. When they'd gone a few paces, Belinda stopped and turned to Benji. Well, she asked him. Have you got a story yet? Benji looked at his big sister quizzically. He asked her what she meant. Did seeing that man give you any ideas? Belinda asked. 
Benji thought back to the man searching for his dog's bone, but he didn't see how that would give him an idea for a story. You've got to use your imagination, Belinda encouraged him. You've got to take a piece of inspiration and, using your mind, transform it into a story. Have a go, she urged him. Think about it. Think hard. So Benji did what his sister said. He thought very hard about it. And after a few seconds, something utterly magical started happening in his mind. He was thinking about the Labrador and suddenly she appeared in his imagination. Except now she was wearing a fur coat. And she told him her bone wasn't only lost, it was missing. Where had it gone? Had it been stolen? Something mysterious was happening here. Then, quite amazingly, another dog bounded into his mind. It was a bloodhound with a sharp nose perfectly suited to sniffing out missing things. The bloodhound was a detective. He wore wire-framed glasses and a top hat and carried a little notebook around with him in which he wrote down all his clues. Don't worry, Miss Labrador, the bloodhound detective said. I'll be sure to find your bone. And then, even more amazingly, into Benji's mind sprang other animals. A crafty fox with a bushy tail. A conniving cat stroking her whiskers. A sly-looking snake. Was one of these creatures the culprit? Benji wondered to himself. Wow, Benji, Belinda said. Look. Look what amazing work you're doing. Belinda pointed to the leather-bound book which had fallen open in Benji's hands. And when Benji looked, he couldn't quite believe what he saw. As if scrawled by an invisible hand, words were appearing all over the page, written in sloping and swooping letters. And besides the words appeared small but beautiful drawings. There was one of a dog in a fur coat and another of a cat with a long, looping tail. Benji felt a big swell of wonder when he saw a title appear at the top of the page. The Mystery of the Missing Bone. Is this my first story? he asked Belinda. Yes, it is, she told him. And what a story it looks like it's going to be. How did it feel making the story in your mind? Benji thought back to how it had felt when all of those animals strolled into his mind. It felt incredible, he said. Now let's go and find some more. At the end of the road, they turned right and walked down a lane with trees growing either side. Benji was looking from left to right. His eyes peeled for more story inspiration. He clutched his book tightly under one arm. With a squawk, a large blackbird took off from a nearby tree, flapping its wings and flying overhead. Benji watched as it soared over them and disappeared out of view. Belinda was watching his face eagerly. Did that give you another idea? she asked. Benji thought for a moment and then shook his head. No, he said. Nothing yet. You have to wait for the right kind of inspiration, Belinda told him wisely. Let's carry on. They continued down a road and eventually walked past a house. Through the window they could hear a telephone ringing. Belinda looked at Benji with one of her eyebrows raised, but he shook his head. 
nothing yet. They carried on, and soon they heard the sound of a bell ringing. Ring, ring. Benji, Belinda, and baby Barney looked at the street up ahead and saw a bright green bicycle coming towards them. It was being ridden by a girl in purple dungarees with her hair in two pigtails. The girl rang the bell on her bike again and called out, Excuse me. The three siblings stood to the side of the lane to let the girl cycle past. She went by with a whoosh and called out, Thank you, over her shoulder. When the girl was gone, Belinda headed off down the road again, but Benji told her to wait. I'm having an idea, he said. And sure enough, that strange, exciting and magical feeling was rushing through him again. He was thinking about the girl on her bike, but all of a sudden, in his mind, the bike was no longer an ordinary bike. Instead, lustrous green wings were sprouting out of the handlebars, and with a giant flap of these new wings, the bike took off into the air. The girl soared up into the sky, her pigtails fluttering behind her. And then, more amazingly still, more people and objects flew into Benji's mind. There, beside the girl on her flying bike, was a boy riding a horse with a coat the colour of gingerbread. But the horse had wings too. And there was another boy riding a hippopotamus that could jump from cloud to cloud. And another girl was perched on top of an octopus, whose eight tentacles were spinning around like the propellers of a helicopter so that it hovered and flew through the air. What were all these kids doing, thought Benji to himself, and why are they all flying together? And then, as if his mind were answering its own question, he saw in the distance a towering mountain, so tall that its tip was snow-capped, and disappeared into the swirling clouds. And on top of that mountain was a golden temple. And at the heart of that temple, a magical prize. Look, Belinda said, pointing at the book. Look, Benji, you're doing it again. The book lay open in his hands once again and words and letters were appearing as though by magic, written in a deep blue ink. Like last time, pictures were appearing by the sides of the pages too. A small image of a winged bike and a snow-capped mountain. Finally, the title appeared at the top of the page. Belinda read it out loud. The Great Race to the summit. Nice work, Benji, she said. I can't wait to find out what that story is about. As they carried on walking down the road, Belinda turned to Benji and gave him a big smile. You know what, Benji, she said to him. I think you're even better at this than I was when I had to fill my book. You, little brother, are a natural storyteller. The book is going to be packed with fantastic tales in no time, I bet. As it turned out, Belinda wasn't wrong, because as they continued strolling around the village, Ideas flowed into Benji's mind more and more easily. Sometimes he would look at something, a tree, or the red post box, or a gate creaking in the wind, and nothing would come to him. But at other times his mind lit up with inspiration, 
as though someone had flicked a switch and turned on a hundred light bulbs. A woman sitting at her downstairs window was transformed in Benji's mind into a magical princess, working on a curious spell to bring good luck to all the people in her kingdom. A queue of ants crawling across the pavement, each carrying a tiny piece of leaf, were on their way to build a spaceship so they could launch the first creepy-crawly mission into outer space. A circle of toadstools at the foot of a tree was the portal to another wonderful world, ruled by a rabbit king with a crown of berries. Very soon indeed, the pages of the book that had all been blank at the beginning of the evening were now crammed with words and pictures. Wow, Belinda said as the three siblings finally turned back onto the road they lived on. You found so many stories, Benji. The book is almost completely filled up. There are only a few pages at the back, still blank. I wonder if you'll find one final idea before we get home. Benji looked all around him, at the houses with their different coloured doors, at the hedges enclosing all the front gardens, at the lampposts glowing gently on the street but he couldn't find anything to give him that one last bit of inspiration. Then, just as they were approaching their house, a car pulled up and a man got out. Benji recognised him immediately. They all did. Benji, Belinda and Barney. Because the man was their dad. He hadn't spotted them yet, but as he watched his dad open the back door and take out his briefcase, filled with all of his doctor's equipment, his thermometer and his stethoscope and his medicines, Benji felt that familiar, tingling feeling in his mind. He was coming up with an idea. He was thinking about his dad and his briefcase full of magical objects, each and every one of which could be used to help someone. The briefcase had special potions in it that could fix a bruise or soothe a sore throat, and a wondrous scanning machine which could immediately identify what was wrong with someone and make them better in a flash. The man who owned the magical briefcase had to work very hard, but at the end of each day, even though he might be tired, He was happy, because he knew how much he had helped other people. Belinda was looking at the book where the title was being written by an invisible hand. The Healing Hero, she said. Nice job, Benji. That's your final story. She put a warm hand on his shoulder and gave him a huge smile. See, Benji, I told you, there's no limit to what your imagination can do. Benji looked down at the book in his hands, the book of blanks which was now a book full to the brim with stories. He felt very pleased and very proud. He was happy with every single one of the stories he'd gathered up that evening. But the one he was most proud of was the final tale about the man with the magical briefcase because that one, he thought, was the closest to the truth. Just then Benji's dad spotted them on the road and opened his arms wide. Kids, he said, you're still up. And he folded all three siblings, Benji, Belinda and Barney into a great, big, warm bear hug. Come inside, they
their dad said to them, let's all read a bedtime story together. What do you think of that idea? All three of them agreed that that sounded like a very good idea indeed. And so, with Barney gurgling sleepily in his crib, Belinda sitting cross-legged on the floor and his dad sat on the end of his bed, Benji finally opened his leather-bound book. He looked down joyfully at the pages full of words and sentences, characters and adventure. And as the sweet feeling of sleepiness settled down over the whole family, pressing gently on their eyelids and making them yawn, Benji began to read out loud his first bedtime story.